All right, if you have a Bible this morning, turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. thought we'd talk about something up to date this morning, so we'll talk about the total destruction of the United Nations. <laughs> That's a nice, positive way to start a new day. All right, now it's going to get kind of heavy. We're going to the Old Testament, and Christians don't read the Old Testament much anymore. And if they did, they wouldn't be talking and acting like they're acting, with heavy hanging over the head, but the axe is about to drop. And Paul warned you this in Romans 11 in the New Testament. It isn't a matter of uh, 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 predicting uh, uh, doom and this and that. Paul told you way back in 60 A.D. that you Gentiles, that's you, if you weren't careful, you'd get just what Israel got. It's in Romans 11. And he said, Behold, the goodness and severity of God, goodness upon those that believe, and severity upon those that fell. And then he said to the Gentiles, I would not have you be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, then all Israel should be saved. Thank you. So what he, what he warned you about was, you Gentiles are going to get wise in your own conceit. Oh, God bless America and that kind of thing. Uh, you're not the chosen people. Israel is the chosen people. What happened to them? They got the shot to pieces and burned out and destroyed for 2,000 years. Didn't they? So the Gentile's problem is he'll have to get stuck in himself and think that God is going to put up with this foolishness forever, and God's not going to do it. All right, Isaiah chapter 40. I hear folks sing about God bless America. That was Kate Smith's song back in World War II. I'm a World War II vet. There are not many of them left. How many here this morning would you stand? World War II. One. Well, that's us. That's two of us. And uh, less all the time. And when Kate Smith sang God Bless America, we were going over there and we were liberating Jews from the Holocaust. We weren't liberating when we went to Korea, so we lost that one. And we weren't liberating when we went to Vietnam, so we lost that one. You're going to lose the next one. All right, Isaiah chapter 40, Lord speaking. You better pay attention to it. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, plural, and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he take up the aisles of very little thing, 17, all nations, God bless America, all nations, no exceptions, all nations before him are as nothing. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. If you're just an American, you're in the wrong pew. You've got to be a Christian. If you're a Christian, your God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not the God of Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln. Yeah, man. We're not at the hangar yet. It gets worse as it goes. You know. All right, 17, all nations before him are counted nothing. Is that clear? Zero. Gentile history isn't the history of anything. It's just Gentiles killing each other for 2,000 years. What's it for? To get the gospel to move east to west. Now it's going clear around. Now you're through. Verse 17, they're counted to him less than nothing. That's a cipher with a rim knocked off. All nations are counted as minus zero. All right, now there's one exception, and that's the problem. Come back to Numbers chapter 23. God accepted one nation. He said, all nations are nothing but the one nation that is something. And it ain't America. Numbers chapter 23, verse 9. For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him, lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Is that clear? Then the, Israel has no business being in the UN. So you'll have to kick them out. All right, Gen uh, Exodus, here's the nation. The chosen nation that is, is not counted less than nothing, but counted as something, is Israel. Exodus chapter, but what Gentile believe this stuff? Christian Gentiles are hung up on the New Testament. What we're going to talk about this morning is not how to get to heaven, 
We're going to talk about uh, somebody stealing somebody's land. You know what it's going to cost you? About two billion people. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is whose? Doesn't belong to Darwin, Mother Nature, Gay, and the rest of the nuts. It's his. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, separate from the others, not reckoned among them. How is God going to get them out? Well, turn to Zechariah chapter 14. What God is going to do right now in the next few years, and right as you watch it daily from the newspaper and television, you'll see it come to pass, just like the old King James said 300 years ago. <laughs> Awful slow catching up, aren't they? Uh, Zechariah chapter 14. What God is going to do, God wants, a, God wants an alibi to wipe out uh, Asia, Africa, and Europe, and North, South America. They've been turning down to the sun now for 2,000 years. I know we've got missionaries out. i got 45 out of my church. Speaking in eight different languages, 17 different fields. I know we're out trying. I know it's still the best country in the world for missionary support. But for 2,000 years, Asia, Africa, Europe, and North, South America have been turning down Jesus Christ. And you know it. And if you don't know it, go over to Europe and do some missionary work. If you don't know it, go down to Mexico and meet Mary. <laughs> for 2,000 years, this world has been turning down God's Son. And the Lord's about to collect. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 2. Now, for I will gather all nations. Is that clear? You say sheep and goat maidens. That's a Schofield note. That isn't the Bible. Those sheep and goat nations there aren't uh, separated according to sheep nation and goat nations. The nations are gathered there, and out of the nations he takes sheep and goats out of the nations. Those are individuals. They treated the Jew right, not nations. You say, why? They're all going to kill Jews. Zechariah 14, verse 2. Now, I know it's kind of shocking to some of you folks. You look at me like a tree full of owls. <laughs> but you've been spending all your time, uh, if you're fooling with the wrong stuff, is sharing and caring and coping and uh, getting slain in the spirit, you know, and all this lovey-dovey stuff. You've been the right crowd, and I'm sure in this outfit here you have been the right crowd. Nobody's going to invite me in if they don't believe the book. They are scared of me, brothers, a two-headed rattlesnake. They think I'm so mean if I drowned, you'd find my body upstream. <laughs> <laughs> and I am with a crowd that doesn't believe the book. They don't impress me, any of them. But the faculty is in the staff of Heidelberg, Edinburgh, sitting right here, and Oxford and Cambridge, and the University of Chicago, and Princeton, and Moody, and Wheaton, and Fuller, and Bob Jones, and Tennessee, Temple Liberty Baptist College, and Crown College, and Piedmont, and Pillsbury, they couldn't keep me awake. I'd spit on them one time, drown the whole bunch. All right, 14-2. I will gather all nations. Is that clear? Any problem? You don't have to have any Hebrew. I'm reading you 16-11. You have to have a newer Bible to understand it. The newer Bibles you get, the less you'll understand Get you a nutty idiot's word. <laughs> That's an NIV. <laughs> or a new American sap headed vision or something. That's a new ASV. Those dumb, stupid, ignorant people did in there. Don't don't blink at me. I debated the head of the NIV, NIV committee down Fort Myers more than ten years ago, a fellow named Collin. That wasn't a debate, it was a Greyhound bus running over a dead possum. <laughs> Anybody that's stupid enough to think that, uh, da that, that David didn't kill Goliath and put it in the Bible ought to have their head looked at. That's an NIV. Anybody dumb enough and ignorant enough and stupid enough with 22 years of education, 500 degrees, to think that all the Jews that came out of Egypt perished in the wilderness is a blank fool. And I say that with charity, of course. <laughs> They say in Hebrews that all that came out of Egypt with Moses died in the wilderness. They did anything of the kind. Read Deuteronomy chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which you never read. The people he was talking to there saw the, the miracles in Egypt and crossed the Red Sea. It was one of the ones over 18 years old in combat that turned back to Kadesh Barnea that didn't get in. You're welcome. More to coming. Verse 2, I'll gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Three, 
Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. Which one? The United Nations, 188 nations, all the nations. 